Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing my December 2014 speculation and investment video. This is number 159. I've got a lot of cool stuff to talk about, so I'm going to jump right in, including two cards from the new set that's coming out. Vintage is getting more popular. Eternal Weekend was huge. We've seen the price of power double in the last few months. There are a lot of people who are starting to get back into this format. I know that a lot just means a very small number who have access to those cards, but those individuals also have the capital to buy foil cards and to make their decks look really cool. I would recommend picking up vintage staples in foil. A lot of them are really cheap right now, with the exception of Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce, I think, is going to get reprinted in Modern Masters 2, so I wouldn't pick those up as a common at 30 bucks. But Delver of Secrets is playable in every format. I don't understand why it is half the price of Spell Pierce. Frexian Revoker is a great card. Mental Misstep is a house in Vintage, and Forge Master is really nice in the Workshop de decks. What makes me say this? It's a Dak Faden. The Dak Faden foils are going for about $200 to $250. That's crazy. The regulars are only going for $20. I would definitely recommend picking up the regular ones right now. If you can get a foil one at a reasonable price, less than that $250, I think it's going to stay at that level. But the growth has already happened there. This is the type of growth that you're going to see, though, for those other vintage staples. In Legacy, now's the time to pick up Abrupt Decay. They're still down around $10. The foils have already shot up, but they are a powerhouse. I would also buy Treasure Cruise foils. They're running about $15 currently. I do not think that Treasure Cruise is going to get banned in Legacy. If it doesn't, the foils will continue to go up over time. And Terminus right now is just really low at about the 3 to $4 range. It is one of the best board wipes in EDH and in Legacy. Now's the time to pick it up. Young Pyromancer is very strong in Legacy and in Modern. Yes, it's only an uncommon, but I would definitely pick it up. On the other hand, Bait Stitcher is seeing a little bit of play in the Jeskai Ascendancy decks. It was a quarter card a few weeks ago. It will go back to being a quarter card if Jeskai Ascendancy is banned in either format. And Treat the Angels is another really nice card, and it's a mythic, so there's not a lot of them out there. I would pick it up at the $8 range. It has playability in Legacy and in EDH. In Modern, I'm be betting that Treasure Cruise will get banned. That's going to bring Snapcaster Mage and Liliana the Veil up to the forefront. Those cards are much weaker right now in a Treasure Cruise environment in Modern. If we see Treasure Cruise go away, these are cards that could really shoot up. I believe Treasure Cruise is going to go away in Modern. In Modern, I would also pick up Corsair of Crew Fix. Yes, when it rotates out in a year, it could drop some, but it's at a very reasonable price at $11. It's not going to see a reprint for a long period of time. On the other hand, I would sell Goblin Guides and Leyline of Sanctity. These are both prime targets to see reprints in Modern Masters 2. In Standard, Thoughtseize is still at a reasonable price at about $16. Siege Rhino is being played a lot, and it's only at $4. And Dig Through Time is a card that could replace Treasure Cruise in some of those modern decks, and a card that I like even more in Legacy. I would buy it at $8. It's very reasonable long-term. There are a lot of them out there because there's a lot of cons being opened, but long-term, it's a powerhouse card. It's even playable in EDH. I would also start to pick up Clever Impersonators, the Blood Tyrant, and Mana Conflux right now. All of these cards are very low because of how much of their sets have been opened, and all of these have long-term playability. Clever Impersonator is going to be an EDH cube favorite for years to come. The Blood Tyrant is really hot right now because there's a strong reanimator deck that is playable, and Mana Confluence is a really, really nice one-time printed City of Brass. City of Brass is only as low as it is because it's been printed seven or eight times. In EDH, as I said, Clever Impersonator is still there. See the unwritten 
seems amazing to me. I just tried it out in my mono green EDH. I really, really like this card. It is not as good as Summoner's Trap because it's not instant speed, but it could also take a jump up if it is playable in a ramp deck in standard with things like Eldrazi or other giant creatures. Solemn Simulacrum is also really low right now because it was reprinted in the new commander decks. It's a staple. I cannot keep these guys in my trade binder. They're always on my buy list. Bait Reforged cards are being spoiled right now. I usually don't like jumping into the speculation until I've seen the entire set, but there's two cards that I just have to talk about right away. Ugin the Spirit Dragon has two ways to protect itself. That is one of the most important things that a Planeswalker needs, is a way to defend itself on an empty board. This does a great job of that. Often you're going to use the minus X as a board wipe and then build him back up over time. This guy's going to be an EDH favorite and if there's a ramp deck in standard he's going to be a two of or three of in that deck. I'm picking him up at 20. Soul Fire Grandmaster was just spoiled in the last 24 hours. I've seen it show up on sites for $10 and sell out instantaneously. I'm headed back over to the Card Kingdom site when I'm done with this video looking for him. They had him for $13 earlier today. I would like to get a full playset. A two casting cost white creature that turns all your lightning bolts into lightning helixes is definitely playable in standard and modern. I really, really like this card. I'm surprised that it came in where it did. This could be the white Snapcaster Mage for white modern decks. Just a four of solid staple in your aggro decks in Jeskai or in Boros aggro. The last note that I've got is one that I've been talking about for several months now. Lands are really cheap. They're not going to be this cheap in a year or two. If you don't have your set of 40 duels or fetches, pick up your cons fetches now for at least that 20. And for your shocks, pick those up now. They're going to go up in a year or two. Those mana bases are going to be really expensive for modern. If we see strong modern support in some pre-PTQs, then these guys are going to be essential for you to have. I would not wait on these. I know there's a lot of cool stuff to pick up right now, but lands should be your priority over anything else. Once you've got your mana base, then you can build any other deck much more easily. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. Thank you to everybody who's out there on Patreon. There is one $2 pack opening still available right now. If you want early access to these slides, I try to post them a day in advance whenever I do my speculation stuff so that people can see what I'm thinking about and give me feedback on it. Uh, thank you guys so much. I look forward to a great year next year. My predictions for next year and how I did with last year's predictions should be up within the next 48 hours.